Seattle, Washington, March 6th, 2019. In search of further evidence that the Nomali statues may have an extraterrestrial connection, ancient astronaut theorist David Childress has arranged to meet up with Skystone collector and researcher Jared Collins. Okay. Wow. Jared has in his possession a number of the mysterious blue stones that were found near the statues. Jared has been collecting sky stones since he first heard about them in 2013. He became fascinated by their enigmatic nature, betraying neither obvious mineral nor man-made origin. So how was it that these stones were actually discovered in modern times? This was actually discovered in 1991 by a man named David Ledbetter. He was in Sierra Leone on a mining concession looking for gold and diamonds. And when he was having his crew dig, occasionally these stones would appear. And interestingly, David went to the village chief to ask if he'd ever seen any of these stones before. And the chief said that when these stones are found, large amounts of gold and diamonds usually follow shortly thereafter. What do other geologists say about stones like this? Are they able to identify them? We've sent these now to 12 different labs. There is not one piece of consensus in here. Everybody has a different opinion. We still don't know, actually, if these are natural or man-made. So maybe it's from another planet. I don't know. I really wish I did, and I would love a chance to actually be able to get this in front of somebody else who could look at it again. I've got some friends at the University of Washington, and I think we can set this up and have another test done. That would be fantastic. I would love to get some consensus on this to understand what this actually is. While tests conducted on the stones found with the Nomali statues have so far produced conflicting and sometimes even confounding results, David is eager to have them tested for himself. At the University of Washington, David and Jared meet with renowned geologist, Professor Peter Ward. Hi, I'm David Childress. Hey. I talked to you on the phone. Uh, it's good to meet you. And this is Jared Collins. Thank you so much for seeing us today. Jared, both of you guys, welcome to the University of Washington ISO Lab. So what do we have in this beautiful box? Well, we're sort of hoping that you can tell us. Well, 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 what are these beauties? We have been through many tests on these, and no one can identify them. They cannot tell us whether these are natural or artificial, what's causing the blue color, if this is ancient or modern. So they've been checked for the common blue minerals, I take it. One thing that we know for sure is that this is not turquoise, this is not lapis, this is not aronite. The fact that it's so unbelievably light really suggests that there's an organic component to it. Anything that goes blue generally is much heavier. Mm. So this is, this is really a mystery. I should mention also that this only comes from one very specific part, from one very specific village. It has never been found anywhere else in the world. Well, let's do a test that removes any doubt about them being partly organic. So Erin is gonna take this rock and she's gonna scrape it into these tiny little tin cups. The tin cups themselves will load into our mass spectrograph. They will then be heated to 1,000 degrees centigrade. Everything inside will combust and turn to gas. And those individual gas molecules will then be sampled, and we can examine if there are any truly organic molecules in this rock. Or was there some life process that was involved in its formation? Will the test performed on the so-called sky stones reveal that they contain previously undiscovered organic material, possibly from a different world. And if so, could it mean that both the sky stones and the Nomali statues are evidence of an extraterrestrial event that occurred on Earth centuries ago? Sedona, Arizona, March 2019 two weeks after bringing the so-called sky stones found in Sierra Leone to the University of Washington for examination. David Childress received an email from geologist Dr. Peter Ward. In the email, Dr. Ward wrote that the results were so strange they ran the tests three times, thinking it was a machine error, and added, this gives me the creeps. To learn more, Childress contacted Dr. Ward through video chat. Hi, Dr. Ward. 
So I wanted to learn about the results. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, it was much stranger than we thought. There really seems to be some sort of organic aspect to this. It's got element nitrogen in it in really high concentrations. But having this high amount of nitrogen puts it into a, wow, that's a very peculiar rock category. We were looking for a possible extraterrestrial origin. Is it possibly a meteorite or even part of a spaceship that exploded? <laughs> uh, let's just say that there's a possibility that it came from off the Earth. As we scientists to say, it's worth more study. Thanks again for uh, doing these tests and, and letting us use your lab. Yep, no problem. See you later. Although the Sky Stones are still a mystery, David and Jared have confirmed that they are unlike any other stone ever examined. Could they have arrived on Earth with the strange beings that are depicted in the Nomaly statues? Is this perhaps physical evidence that linguistic similarities found across the globe? Dogon, Dagon, Dragon, Dogu point to some sort of extraterrestrial intervention. Ancient astronaut theorists say yes, and they claim that in yet another earthly location may be found the most significant evidence of all, a possible alien home base. County Meath, Ireland. Here in the Boyne River Valley, a large circular mound rises out of the earth, the Newgrange Passage Tomb, built around 3200 BC. It was constructed with over 200,000 tons of stone quarried 75 miles away and contains one passageway that leads to a centralized chamber. Newgrange is one of the most important sites in all of Europe. It was possibly a stone circle with 36 or 37 stones. Only 12 of these still remain. And after that, a huge mound made of stone and earth was built within the stone circle itself. Within this, we have a huge chamber, which is a cruciform shape or a cross. It's got some beautiful carvings on the 97 curb stones that go around the edge, as well as on the main entrance stone and within the chamber itself. Mainly zigzags and spirals, and most notably a triple spiral at the back of the main chamber within the actual site itself. Newgrange was designed to honor the winter solstice but according to a book published in 2012 called The Newgrange Sirius Mystery, the entire mound was also built to align with the star Sirius A in the night sky. The declination of Sirius is the same as the winter solstice sunrise moving across the sky. And through the light box, which is a, a rectangular area just above the main entrance, this is where you witness not only the sunlight coming through, also later in the day, serious light coming through as well. The Dogon of Mali in West Africa claimed that their gods came to Earth from the star Sirius B. Ancient astronaut theorists connect these visitors to gods with similar names all over the world. But they also point out an intriguing connection to Newgrange in Ireland. In addition to being in line with the star Sirius, legend says that this megalith was built by a Celtic god with a name that sounds by now eerily familiar, the god Dagda. The main god that's associated with Newgrange is called Dagda. So here, once again, we have this same word that appears to mean something about gods coming from Sirius. The dwellers of the British Isles worshipped a god named Dagda. That cannot be by coincidence. The god known as Dagda was said to be the leader of a group of otherworldly beings called the Tuatha Dé Danann. So the Tuatha Dé Danann were this renowned fairy race that arrived mysteriously in Ireland many thousands of years ago. The supreme deity of the Tuatha Dé Danann was Dagda, Dagda Mór and he was a renowned god. He was said to have built and lived inside Newgrange. 
they had very advanced weaponry and uh, different types of what sounds like machinery but also they taught the high arts of civilization and they were said to be almost like the shining ones of the biblical tradition it's almost like a science fiction movie when you start looking at these ancient irish myths could Newgrange have once been an alien outpost on Earth? Was Dagda the supreme leader of a race of highly advanced extraterrestrials that came to Earth and left a lasting influence on our ancestors? Perhaps the answer can be found by examining the Dog Star. Across the world, ancient people claim they were visited by amphibious beings from Sirius who gave the gift of knowledge and technology. The Dogon of Mali, Dagon of the Babylonians, the Dogu of Japan, Dagda of Ireland, and the dragon whose name echoes in languages all over the world. So you have to wonder is it possible that all the root words come from the same visitors? And my answer to that is a resounding yes. But what about the English language? Is there any connection in English between the ancient syllable dog or dag and the star Sirius? Experts say the answer is hiding in plain sight. Sirius is the dog star. Tonight, when you go outside, look for the three stars that make up Orion. And Orion's belt has an arrow that points right to Sirius. So you can see Sirius, the dog star, tonight. And in fact, today, the reason we talk about the dog days of summer is that those are the days that Sirius is overhead. It's very interesting that these beings said they came from Sirius, which we call the dog star because when etymologists try to trace the origins of the English word dog, it's not attributable. They can't find the origin of that word. The word dog is one of the strangest in the English language because no one knows where it came from. English is mostly derived from German, Latin, and French. The German word for dog is hund. The Latin word is canis. And the French word is chien. So where do we get dog? Is it possible that some being from the dog star or from this system gave that type of vocabulary of Dagon, Dogon, Dagu, and all these similarities are speaking of one race that visited ancient man? And I think in this particular case, whatever came down here at the time, or what group of extraterrestrials came down here at the time, they were referred to as this, and then other civilizations just carried it and picked up on it. And we have to at least ask the question, is this in fact the name of these god beings? And I believe it is. 